Hello, welcome back to The Shoe Shimmer, a channel dedicated to instructional videos on shoe shining. This is your host, Richard, and let's get into the video. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is brush your shoes off like always. I've cut it out just for the sake of time. So we're skipping to the next step, which is adding a conditioner. Here I'm using, again, the mink oil. Now, I don't typically use mink oil every single time I sh uh, shine my shoes, excuse me. But if it's been a while since I've worn a pair or shined a pair, I will put on some mink oil, let it sit for at least 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll leave it for uh, overnight just to let it soak into the leather, uh, leather and really nourish the leather. And I want you to pay special attention to the way that I'm applying it. Now, you can put as much as you want, but generally you're going to want it to be as dry as possible before you actually brush it off. If it's dry, then you know it's coming off. If you just saw what I did there also, there was a little bit of mink oil that was inside of the, the little uh, brogue right there, the little hole. And all you have to do to get rid of that is to just uh, pat it down with your brush and the, the bristles of the brush will go into the hole and it'll remove anything that's in there, whether that's polish or mink oil or some kind of conditioner, that's all you gotta do. So again, back to where I was, what I was saying, when you apply it, you're gonna wanna let it, you know, sit there and, and dry just so that you know that it's really being absorbed into the leather. You're not going to want to put an excessive amount, like you're not going to want it to be, you know, super thick on there or anything like that. And the reason for that is, first, you're being wasteful. Really, you only need a very thin layer of the mink oil uh, all over the shoe, and that's going to do the trick. If If you are layering it, or if you are, if there's like thick gobs that, that, that are on the shoe, uh, you're really using too much. Um, you're just being a little, little bit of excessive there. Uh, again, all you really need is kind of a, a thin layer over the shoe and, and that should do the trick again. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you get into all the crevices. I personally, I use my, my hand, my fingers for the conditioner for the polish for pretty much every single step just because i feel that i can uh, feel it feel the leather and and how it's reacting to whatever i'm putting on it a lot better i've just found personally that if i use a cloth like a little chamois or a brush to apply uh, the mink oil or the polish that i can't really tell when i've when i put it on too thick now, the next thing, again, that I'm doing here is I'm going to end up brushing off uh, the mink oil. I've, I've let it sit for about 30 minutes, I'd say. I think it was a little bit over 30 minutes. And, you know, obviously I've cut that out. And so I'm just going over with a brush, brushing off the excess. Again, if, if you've put too much mink oil, you may need to come back with a cloth to just wipe it down and then brush it again. And so, and that's, that's why it's so important to just obviously use enough where you're, you're covering the entire shoe, but don't use so much that, you know, there's gobs of it that you're going to have to like wipe it down even after you brush it. Like usually if you're brushing it, you should be able to, you know, touch the leather afterwards and it, and it feels, you know, relatively dry. You know, it's like, you don't want it to feel moist. Uh, you don't want to be, you know, smearing it around. The mink oil, like if you touch it and it's and it's wet, or if you're leaving streaks uh, with your finger, you've you've probably used too much, and you need to go over uh, the shoe with a shirt. Now, before I start uh, the next the next step, I just want to talk about how much polish you want to use, and you really want to be very you know judicious in the way that you apply the polish. Uh, it's going to look dull. It's gonna look cloudy, and that's the way that you want it. You know, you don't want it to look slick. You don't want it to look wet. Uh, generally, I usually apply only one layer of polish, but it's not a bad idea to apply one layer to the entire shoe. Wait a little bit for it to dry, for it to soak in, brush it off, and then repeat the process one more time. Uh, again, I don't really do that, but it's you know plenty of people do. It's it's you know good. It, it adds an extra protective layer to the surface of your shoe. So I would recommend it, even though I personally like to just stick with one layer. And that being said, I also recommend taking off your shoelaces for this step, just so that you can make sure you get into all the crevices that you're able to put polish on the tongue as well. 
And if you're in a hurry, you can, you know, you can leave your shoelaces in. It's not going to be that much of a problem, but you're also going to have to be a little bit careful, especially if your shoelaces are a different color. Uh, you're just going to want to be careful not to get the polish in there. So if you can, if you have a little bit more time, I highly recommend taking the shoelaces off for applying the polish. Again, you're going to want to wait, uh, you know, maybe five minutes or more. Uh, really, I wouldn't leave polish on overnight. It's just not needed. But you definitely want to let it sit and dry at least five minutes, you know, 10, 30 if you want to. Uh, over that, I mean, it's it's the polish is going to dry out pretty quickly. And so any amount of time over that, it's not really going to add or, uh, you know, take away from uh, from the effect of the polish. So go ahead and brush it off after you've waited, uh, you know, whatever amount of time that you feel comfortable with. And, you know, you want to give it a thorough brushing. Uh, usually I spend, you know maybe like two or three minutes, making sure uh, I've brushed over every portion of the shoe. Again, if there's something that is, has remained cloudy, you know, just continue to brush it out. It's just the polish. You shouldn't have a problem, you know, brushing off the polish after you've waited a couple of minutes. If you do have a problem, you've probably applied too much. Again, a lot of the steps in polishing shoes you you learn them with time. You know, it's you need, you need to continue to shine shoes. You need to uh, continue these steps in order to become more familiar with you know the tools that you're using. You know, with any trade, the more that you do something, the more skilled you're going to become at it. And the same thing goes for polishing. Um, if you are worried, honestly, I would just open up a video. This video, uh, another video of someone that you know is skilled polishing shoes and just have that playing right next to you. That's what I did. I, every time I polished a pair of shoes, whether that was just applying, you know, this polish, whether that was putting on a mirror shine, I would just open up a video on YouTube and just have it playing so I can quickly reference it. So I can see, you know, what they're doing. So I can see, you know, how much polish they're applying, what the shoe looks like after each step, you know, uh, what the shoe looks like after they apply a conditioner or, you know, run of a tour, mink oil, whatever it is. Um, after they are applying a, a new layer of wax for a mirror shine, it's, it's just a great tool that you can use. The internet's, you know, it's wonderful. So the next thing that I'm actually going to do is start waxing the cap toe. Now with this pair of shoes, uh, I actually end up putting wax all over the the cap toe as well as the outside portion of the heel counter and that's basically the same step that I do here but I just I don't spend as much time on it I don't want you know and in case you don't know sorry the heel counter is the surface is well it's a, it's a piece of leather that's just under the surface on the heel of your shoe now the heel counter and the cap toe are both reinforced with a you know a thicker more firm piece of leather and that's why there's structure to the toe and to the heel of a shoe now that being said again you're going to want to apply a few layers of wax i usually stick around five uh, but i was reading up on just the physics of waxing shoes and really what you're doing is you're filling the pores of the shoe with wax and in my previous video I said that when you add water you're trying to expand the leather to help form a, more of an even surface uh, but really that's not what you want so what's actually going on is when you apply the water you're applying just a little bit of water and a little bit of wax to help the smoothing process uh, you do not want the leather to become saturated with water that's not what's happening as a matter of fact if the leather becomes oversaturated with water uh, the the cap is not going to be able to shine it's just going to look extremely murky extremely dull and applying wax won't do anything to it if you are trying to shine the toes of your shoes if you're trying to create a mirror shine and it just continues to be you know dull and murky you need to set aside the shoe and you just need to wait for the water to 
to evaporate essentially. And once that's happened, then you can go back and you can continue what you're doing. You know, if you're unable to shine it, and again, if it's if it's looking, you know, like the way that I've described, you've you've put too much water, and you need to you know lessen up the amount of water that you're using. You know, with here, you've you've seen me. I'm just touching the top of that little ice cube, you know, at the bottom of the screen. And that's enough water. You know, you don't need to be dipping your, you know, the whole of your two fingers in in a little, you know, cap of water. You really only need an, an extremely minimal amount of water. And, you know, I'm developing a shine. You can see that, you know, I'm, I'm going to the waxes quite often. You know, I pulled a neutral wax out right there and just, you know, combining it with a black wax. There isn't an exact science to using, you know, whether you use neutral or black on a black shoe. Uh, really, it's just kind of, you just kind of see how it goes. You know, you, you see how the mirror shine is reacting and you go from there. Um, you know, I went back. I decided to go back to these pair of shoes, a f you know, I think three or four days later. I, I did it in the morning and I just went back. And I went over with uh, black wax. Now, all I did was I didn't. I applied a, a full layer of wax over the already, you know, shiny cap toe, and I let that dry for, you know, thirty minutes. To actually, no, I intended to let it dry for thirty minutes. I I let it dry overnight, so I applied a layer of wax and I let it dry overnight. Um, then in the morning, I went back and I used extremely minimal amounts of wax and water to then smooth over that surface. You know, again, what you're doing is you're just trying to, you know, smooth over the surface of wax that you have created. And the more wax that you end up putting on the shoe, the higher likelihood that when it cracks, it'll just crack more extensively you know you'll get you know a little spider spider web or you know it kind of look like a whole little river system from outer space you know if, if you put too much wax and so you know what you want to be doing is you want to be trying to create that oh see there are the heel counters I, I applied a little bit of wax and I shine those as well but you're going to want to try and produce this mirror shine with as little wax as possible and again, the reason for that is the more wax that you put, if there is cracking, it's going to be much more extensive than if there, there wasn't as much wax. And so really, I'd keep it down to, you know, as few layers of wax being initially applied to the cap toe and using minimal layers of wax afterwards. You know, uh, I usually, you know, achieve my mirror shines in, you know, one session and if I, if I want to be really patient, I'll pull them out in a few days and apply another layer, you know, do that process that I just explained. Uh, just if I want to, you know, refine that shine just a little bit more. And this was the final product. Uh, again, I did go back a few days later from this initial shining and I've added some photos to the end just a little before and then an after. I've also posted a few other pictures of the, you know, the final end product of when I wore these shoes. And I do think it made quite a difference. Uh, I think it improved quite a bit from these in, this initial mirror shine. And there you have it. And as you can cl clearly tell, I hope, the mirror shine is just a little bit more crisp. You know, you can really see my hand very clear in the reflection of the shoe. You know, I highly recommend waiting a couple days for all the wax to settle and then going back, adding a layer, letting it dry overnight, and then, you know, doing your final shine. And that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please feel free to, you know, give me any kind of feedback. It's always more than welcome. You know, drop a comment like follow subscribe wherever you're watching it on uh, youtube or instagram uh, this is just what i love doing and i'm glad that i have an opportunity on this platform to to share what i love and as always thank you for watching and have a wonderful day